amigo. Andale. 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 No te detenga demasiado. Nearest Globe and Ludington? Right. I understand that it is your intention to fly out with 9,300 pounds of Ecuadorian coffee in your aircraft. That's right. For which you have paid no export tax. Export tax? Now hold it a minute, amigo. We have been paying more DDA to every two bit official. Wait from a minute. Hold it, Fred. Hold it. Hold it. I apologize for my partner, but uh, <clears throat> we didn't know anything about any export tax. Besides, we're flat broke. <laughs> Not one centavo. <laughs> and you're just gonna have to leave your coffee here, senor? Wait a, wait a minute, wait, hold. What do we owe you? That'll be $300. American. Look, we pay, pay 50 cents a pound for the coffee. Give you 600 pounds of it. <laughs> you have a most unusual sense of humor, senor. There is not one man in Ecuador who buys coffee. Hey. I don't think we're going to be able to make a run for it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Listen, I think if El Cid there doesn't get us, uh, their Air Force would be real happy with a little exercise. All that coffee, man, it's not worth a penny here, and in San Francisco, it's pure gold. For a lousy 300. Just like that time in Algeria. I don't remind Damn. you, huh? Hey, uh, wait a minute, old buddy. Remember those guys in the bar last night, huh? Oh, Fred, that's illegal, man. <laughs> True. But, uh, did work pretty good when we were flying out that Greek Colombian stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what now, you just uh, pre-flat the bird there and keep your fingers crossed, okay? Okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't shoot. Not packing anything heavier than a cigar.
20, 40, 60, 80, 300. You fully reverse, senor. They already signed. Thank you very much. Senor. Yeah. Gracias. Y buen viaje. You know it, buddy.
Condo? Yeah, well, it looks like we got two of them sick back here now. A lot of no comprando, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, It's the right ox tank. Right. I said right. I just did. We're gonna have to make an emergency landing. What's close? Well, let's see. On the chart here, closest thing is a strip. Some kind of glider deal. Uh, mirror. Meadow mirror. Get in my get on the horn, crank him yeah. up, crank him yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, Meadow mirror, car, Unicom. Meadow mirror, Unicom, this is Douglas 08 Romeo. We have an emergency. Do you read me? Over. Meadow mirror, Unicom. Meadow mirror, Unicom, this is uh, Douglas 08 Romeo. Do you read me? Over. Do you read me? Hey, Joe! Yeah? I think there's something coming over on the radio! Okay. Anything you say, man. No, first of all, your sleeping bag, now your thermocol. Oh, no, you're kidding. Yeah, great equipment, buddy. Yeah? <laughs> Hey, Matt, where's that tackle box, huh? It's back up there. Well, come on, let's get it. All right. Yeah, let's but... not waste any time. Hustle up. Hey, hey! I feel Jeez. guilty. This is Douglas 08 Romeo. We got an emergency up here. Do you read me? Over. Metamir Unicom, come in, please. This is Douglas 08 Romeo. We've lost all power. Would you rather be picking oranges? Hmm? No. Okay. But I don't feel like going fishing either. Well, you fix that by bringing your little brother along. Well, I can't leave him alone yeah, yet. I know, I know. That's okay. Keep our mind on the trout, if there are any. <laughs> There'll still be time to talk. We've already talked about that. Let's just try and have some fun, okay? Douglas 08 Romeo. Do you read me? Over. That's it. We're losing it. Yeah, I can't raise anybody. Keep trying. Keep trying. Come I'm on, trying. Metamir Unicom. Metamir Unicom. This is Douglas 08 Romeo. We're in a lot of trouble up here. Now, how about it? Please, do you read me? Metamir Unicom. This is Douglas 08 Romeo. Come in, please. Affirmative, Douglas 08 Romeo. This is Douglas 08 Romeo. We've lost all power. We're coming in from the south and we're losing altitude rapidly. We have a medical emergency oh board and some kind of pain. Oh, I better call Doc Douglas 08 Romeo standing by. Operator? Uh, yeah, Dorothy, this is Joe Harmon. Uh, hi, Joe. Hi, listen, uh, you want to get me Doc Barnes? Dr. Barnes is here. He's until Friday. Well, how about Doc Hodges? Oh, you know him. Yeah, I know how he is, Dorothy, Joe? but Joe? this is an emergency. All right, I'll call him and ring you right back. Hodgins. What kind of an emergency? Dorothy, they'll have to land someplace else. I don't practice medicine anymore. You know that. I'm sorry, you just call the paramedics in the city. They can be here in 45 minutes. Goodbye. Zero Eight Romeo, what's your position? Uh, we don't know. We're just real low.
town surrounded by orange groves, and it looks like an F up on the hillside. Finleyville. Nelson's field. All right, that's down by the highway. You call Dorothy back. I'll get the car. Springer. No wonder. It's leaking fluid in the mass. Take it over to Harry's. Tell him to fix it. We need every one of these we can get. Mr. Springer. Yeah. Hello? Chief Beasley, who do you think it is? What is it, Lee? Shh. What happened? What happened? A plane went down. What? Oh, my. Call the maid. Sorry. Right. Call for you on the CB radio. No, it never fails. Jack Douglas here. Oh, no, Dorothy. I'm trying to keep these guys picking. Come on, Pedro, get going. Okay, boss. All right, I'll be right with you, Dorothy. All right, everybody works. <laughs> Which way is Nelson's field from here? South. That's one blast of horn. Ah, that's north. South is three blasts. Oh, right, right. With everybody set to pick oranges, we'll be lucky to see dogs in the Lift? What are you doing up so early in the morning, honey? Going to the warehouse? Hey, uh, I was gonna call you. Let's meet at lunch. But I've got nothing better to do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
Let's take a look, all right? Just be careful. All right, honey. It doesn't look like there are any openings. What is all this stuff? It looks like coffee beans. Come on, let's look in the back. There, okay? Come on, you guys. Yo, someone's coming. Thank God. And it's Doc. Now listen, Matt. Come on. Come on back. Let's go back to the cargo door. For me, Sydney. One of them is still moving. Here, I think this will break. Are you stand back now? The man on the right is still alive, but just barely. You sure all those doors are jammed? Yeah. Hey, Bert, you know, I think the best thing is to do is just knock out a couple of those windows and hook the record to it and just pull it out. That's a good idea. Let's do it. Okay. Hey, hurry! Turn the thing around. I want to get the hook and hook it to those two windows and yank the thing out, okay? okay Come on, let's go. Buddy. Hustle up. I've never seen anything like Yeah, okay, okay, just get out of the way. Come on, let's go. That's it, whip it around. Conquista, Doris, conquista. Oh, just take it easy, will you? Come on. right out to that field, okay? Give me a shovel, will you? Come on, look at all these things. Stay back, everybody, please. There's a gasoline leak. Stay back. Hey, relax, Mr. Fire Chief. Okay, Jack. Come on, directly from there, right on out there. It's hard as rock in this place. Hey, Lee. Morning, Jack. Looks like you gin running game got uh, interrupted this morning. Uh, not today. I've been at the warehouse till 4 a.m. Lee, keep the people back, will you? 
hurt nothing, Bert. Ain't every day we got a plane crash around here, is it, Jack? Hey, I hear there's coffee on that plane. Jack, uh, I think we got it under control. But I would like to tap into the irrigation pipes from Nelson's Ranch, just in case, and I need your authorization. Yeah, I thought you had water in your engine. Yeah, I got 300 gallons, but if that thing goes... Yeah, with this drought on, I couldn't tell you to use another man's water. Jack, this is an emergency. Frank! Don't like that. What's the matter with you? You want to take a little trip to Kingdom Come? That's gasoline. Lee, will you get these civilians back before one of them blows the sky high? Lee! Get them back. Now. When did you start giving orders, Bert? Hey, Bert! Yeah! Bert! Yeah. Okay, we got the, uh, got the trench built, gasoline's running off. All right, but before we try anything, I want to get the hoses in position. Right, okay. Oh, no. Chuck, stop! No, 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 Chuck! to get these people back to picking oranges. How much longer is it going to take? I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody left in that airport. <sighs> oh, this is a hell of a mess, Bert, especially when you figure that one of your firemen on a bike started the fire. Jack, why don't you just go back and pick your oranges and take your constituents with you, huh? Well, somebody's got to stay here and take charge.
Hey, how you doing, Matt? Oh, pretty good. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You know I'm tough. Boy, you're ugly. I think I'm gonna kill you. Eh, I guess not. <laughs> speak Spanish or... Hey! We got two guys in here. One's alive. Uh, let's get them out. Yeah. Come on. Uh, Anybody ever tell you you're ugly, huh? You're a little monster. Not want not. You can't do anything with wet coffee. Joe found the logbook. This flight originated in Ecuador. Excuse me. I gotta talk to you, Mayor. You gotta get this thing roped off and posted. I looked it up. It's the law, Jack. But why us? Seems to me it's a job for the FAA. I don't know. I probably don't want people grabbing souvenirs. Frank, I told you to get out of oh, here. Come now. on, I'll have 20 here, people. Oh, Frank, I said get on. out. I'm going, I'm going. These are the poor people, Doc. I think that's it. You know, there was a medical emergency on board. I, I think he said fever. Should we quarantine the plane, Doc? They did come from South America. I don't know. Are you saying there's some kind of plague on this airplane? No, I'm not. These men are in shock. They probably have internal injuries, possible brain damage. We just have to get them to the hospital to find out. Yeah, but Doc, you're not saying it isn't a plague. Chief Beasley, if you want to put that idea into people's minds, why, you go right ahead. I don't know. Chuck and I are going to take Frank back to the clinic and isolate him. You put those other men in the ambulance as soon as he gets here, and Joe, you go with him. Of course. Because I need a report on them now. If one of us doesn't go with him, it'll come in the mail on Tuesday. All right, anybody who doesn't want to stay around here, move out right now. You going, Lee? No, I think I'll stay here, Jack. I'll I'll see you. <laughs> You talk to see me, I call it. Agree. That fungus or bacteria could act so quickly. Would you let me have a postmortem as soon as possible? Thank you. Lucky you were here to answer the phone today. Mary, we better put a couple more beds out on the porch. 
We aren't in for an epidemic, are we? If we get one more victim, I think the answer is yes. When you do, would you tell her that Chief Beasley called? Chief Beasley? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, I wish you'd quit blowing that damn whistle. <laughs> well, at least he's not blowing it on us. Someday somebody's going to. You know that. Cheers. You know, you could always ask for a divorce. You could always just get in that big old car of yours and start driving. No, no, my daddy told me that running away was no solution. Well, your daddy should have left you a lot more money and a lot less advice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rich. Hmm. <laughs> How about the radio? She just hit her head. Gloria. I'm going to take her to Dr. Barnes. You call her. Dr. Dr. Barnes is still out of town. I'm sure of it. Well, then Hodgins. Hodgins is in town. Okay, I'll take her there. Kathleen. Racket, Kathleen. Come on, Kathleen, honey, let me have the racket. Let me have the racket, Kathleen. Look what she's got. Come on, let me have it. Honey, let me have it, honey. Let me have it, honey. Boy, that's a girl. Come on, Peggy's gonna be the hit of our science fair. <laughs>
What happened? She hit her head. I can see that. Wear this for your protection, huh? Thanks. You'll call me? Yeah, I'll call you as soon as I can. Why don't you fly over and pick me up, okay? Take care of yourself. Come on. Crazy. You put that thing on. Yep. Bye. Hi, Rich. Listen, I'm sorry. I heard Frank died. What does Doc want me for, you know? Gloria's had an accident. Gloria? Both is weak. 36. Oh my God, Doc. Mary started EKG. What happened to her? Hurry, Mary. Lee would be much better if you wait outside. Doc, is she going to be all right? Lee, please, wait outside. When we still lived there, before it became a school, we used to go on picnics. My wife. She's an employee of the school, a teacher. I, I happen to be a trustee. We, we, we had things to talk about. Things to talk about. Two of you on a blanket? Come on. I don't have to listen to this. Hell, you don't! You'll listen to anything I... Rich, you excuse us a moment. Uh, she's gonna... Lee, I couldn't save her. I'm sorry. Richard, wait a minute, please. Were you with Mrs. Beasley when she had the accident? I had nothing to do with this. Rich. Was there a snake anywhere nearby? A snake? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. There's a small wound on her foot. I don't know what the connection is. All right, thank you, Rich. Lee? Uh, well, let me get it done. Listen, I got some coffee in the kitchen. Wouldn't you like a cup? Oh, come on, let's, let's, let's try a cup of coffee, Lee. Well, let's give it a try. Eight, west seven. KMA3. Doc Hodgins? Yes, Steve. Is Mrs. Beasley all right? Steve, Mrs. Beasley is dead. Dead. How could she be dead? What the devil is that? Where did you find that? Oh, by the school. It was crawling in the grass. Was that anywhere near the place Mrs. Beasley had her accident? Just down the hill. Steve, may I keep this? There it is. All right, Doc, we'll check it out. Thanks. He wants us to check the body to see if we can find anything that looks like a snake bite. Snake bite? That's it. All right, we're checking it out, Doc. Hey, Doc, we got something here. Looks like a snake bite. Looks like somebody did some first aid on it, too. Uh, this one's got some small holes on his leg. Could be a bite. Is the skin around the puncture gray? Yeah, it's burned, kind of gray. Well, that's the same thing. What kind of snake is it? It's a spider. Some kind of tarantula. I got one right here. Did it come in on the airliner? There's probably more than one of them, too. What we need right now is a specialist to identify the toxin. Hey, Doc, listen, I know a guy in L.A., a professor. Now, if I can get a hold of a... Doc... Call Cindy and tell her to meet me on the Willing Fork. Okay, I'm on the way. 
What is it? Doc thinks maybe a dangerous spider was on the plane. Well, I saw a big one right near the plane crash. Hey, let's look for it. And then we'll know for sure if it wasn't bored, okay? Look, just cool it. You know you're treating me like a baby. I want to help. You can. Ride your bike over to Doc Hodgson's place. He has a spider in a jar, and you can tell if it's the kind you saw. Okay? All right. Right. Hey, look, watch out for the trucks at the way station. shipment by tomorrow. Jack? Hey. Hey, what are you doing here? I've got to talk to you, Jack. It's important. Yeah? Gloria Beasley died. What? Well, how did it happen? Well, these better. Hey, put those away and scare away the workers. I've seen those before. They're strays coming out of the desert or up from Mexico. But they never hurt anybody. I've never seen anybody die from a spider bite. Today I had four. This isn't local. Hey, hey, what are you looking at? Come on, let's go. Let's keep it moving. Sam, you've worked hard for this town, and so have I. You know, the way this drought is going, every one of us is on the ropes. These oranges are the last crop we'll able to see for a long time. We're not talking about oranges. We're talking about people. Well, this is insane. Any, anything that came in on this plane is a problem for the FAA. But our problem is these oranges. Yeah, we got to get them ready by 8 in the morning. And if you're out there someplace running your mouth off about spiders and getting in the way of the work, you'll be put in jail. Now, is there anything I said that you didn't understand? What is it? I don't know. This is the tarantula that kills people, huh? Where'd you get this? Plain load of coffee from Ecuador. Uh, look, there isn't a poisonous tarantula, is there? Now, this is not a true tarantula. This is a Phonutria nigraventor. You see? Look at the fangs. They operate vertically. This is commonly called the wandering spider or banana spider. Mm -hmm. How many of them are there? Well, I don't know. Probably lots. This is the most aggressive and venomous spider in the world. You'll have to destroy all the spiders in the aircraft. Well, doctor, the spiders seem to have left the aircraft. Do you have any idea where they might go? Well, a totally alien spider would have to
have to seek out a food supply, insects, called banana spiders because they feed on the insects that they find around bananas or other fruit. What about oranges? Most assuredly. You'll never find them. They'll be scattered in orchards or, or in some enclosed area where there are volumes of fruit. What can we do to get rid of them? Strong insecticide. Very strong. Or fire. But you have to locate them first. Would you like some lemonade while you wait? Oh, no. Uh, do you have any idea when the duck might be back? I can't say. Well, then I'm going to go find him. Well, what's so important? Doc, you really believe these things are that dangerous? I do. Well, I'll tell you. Jack Douglas is right about one thing. You spread the word that those things are loose, nobody's going to work the oranges. They could wear gloves. They could wear boots. Will you tell them the truth? Just tell them how to protect themselves. Mr. Thomas! Have you seen Doc Hodgins anywhere? He was talking to Bert Springer. Thanks. How are you doing, Matt? Oh, I'm pretty good. Good. Ah! It's all right, honey. We're just a spider. We you saw a spider drive up on the truck. What is it? Spider. How big was it? Well, it was a big one. Went right up the truck. It's all right. They're perfectly harmless. Got it. They just broke another conveyor over at the warehouse. Was Elmer running it? I don't know. But uh, Mr. Douglas wants you to come over and straighten things out. I really need that right now. Uh, oh. See him up there anywhere? Superb marmalade. Why Just like I told you, boss. We got the finest Valencia orange crop in the state. Tree ripened, organically grown, and it's free from chemicals and additives. I see you in the office.
all started. Okay, go around again. This time a little bit lower. There's another one down there. Nobody's found him yet. Hey, I just thought of something. That's that's the town up there. That's a school where Gloria Beasley was bitten. And that's almost a direct line to the plane crash. And at the end of the line is the warehouse. Volumes of fruit in an enclosed area. Dr. Benton was right. Let's skip the airport and land at the warehouse. I gotta find Bert. Matthew. Yeah. No. Yeah, he's over at the docks. No. Yep. Oh! oh. Uh, no! 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 Evacuated right now. Is this somebody's idea of a joke? You don't have the authority. Jack, I'm the fire chief, which means I'm responsible for public safety. And if that isn't enough for you, I'm also half owner of this warehouse. Now, is there anybody in this section of it? Smitty locked up about an hour ago, but we're going back to work. No way, Jack. Smitty! Heard I'm gonna have you arrested, do you hear? Smitty! Smitty! That, that plane went down four miles from here. We can work something out. Uh oh, there's Smitty. Smitty, we gotta get everybody out of. Oh, no. Hey, Joe. What are you doing, Joe? I want your insecticides. You got any objections? Do you? use that sprayer in there. Not yet. Just Joe, get the shut sheriff. Oh, shut up, Jack. Joe, listen. I know how you feel. I can't let you destroy a whole town. Joe, 
You're the only one of us here that talked to that doctor in L.A., and we've got to know what he said. Come on. This is the one place they'll come to. It's got what they need. It's an enclosed area. And they need insects. The Department of Agriculture may want to destroy the whole crop. Yeah, that is if they ever find out about it. That's stupid, Jack. That's really stupid. Wait. Well, who's going to tell them? Hey. You, me? Wait. No, oh, sir. It? Jack, you want to use insecticide in that warehouse? Insect? We were thinking about it. Right. Well, if you do, my company will have to refuse the orange. Insecticide free. It's spelled out in the contract. Hey, how about if we use smoke? That would force them out. You couldn't guarantee the flavor of the oranges wouldn't be affected. Well, nobody can do that. Look, if those oranges aren't on that train by 8 in the morning, they'll rot. They're tree-ripened and fresh. We'd lose everything, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. What you're saying? That warehouse isn't sure for two hundred thousand dollars. So? <laughs> if it would burn, we'd collect a hundred for you, a hundred for me. What happens to the oranges? But they're gonna go anyway. Come on, hey Burke, come on, I'm not finished. We've only got 15 hours until those oranges have to be shipped. Well, what have you got in mind? Steve, come here. I got a book underneath the seat of the airplane. I want you to get it for me, okay? Tarantulas, Felitria. Feeding habits, mating, natural enemies. The most common enemy is this spider wasp. Well, so what? No, listen. The spider, upon hearing the characteristic whine of the wasp, is beset by such terrible, genetically implanted fear that it will cease all motion and remain in a state of virtual suspended animation for minutes, sometimes for hours. That's it. Oh, come no, on, will you? Joe, is this it? If we can convince the spiders that there are wasps around... That's right. Then we can pick them up in an immobilized state. Oh, but the spiders are in the oranges. And the oranges are in boxes. You can't get to them. But they're hungry. They're hungry. Now, if we can get all the fruit flies, the bugs, and the moths in the, in the center of the with warehouse... Lights. All of right. area with lights. Right. Where are you going to get the wash, huh? My uncle has some in a stump over by his place. Look, it's worth a try, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Now we got to collect enough wasps to fill the warehouse, right? Wrong. We're going to give Mother Nature a little power boost. Here it is. Thanks. It's not immobile. You look scared, though. Well, maybe it's the wrong kind of wasp. Oh, maybe it's the sound of the pitch or the volume or something. Let's get an amplifier from a guitar. Hey, I got one back at school. All right, let's use it. Hey, Bert, you got the light. Harry. Yeah, get a hand, will you? I don't think it's going to work, Joe. It's got to work. I can't figure it out. You got that plugged in. There it is. All right, bring up the base. Bring up the base, will you? All right, all right. A little more. All the way. A little more. It's all the way. All right, bring the gain up. Bring it up just a little bit. All right, punch the base up all the way. 
Drop the treble. All right. Two more. Two more. All the way. I get the gain up there. Somebody hand me some more tape. What are you doing here? I want to help. We need your help. And I'll always need your help.
long do you think it's going to take to get all of them? Well, as long as it takes to get all of them scanners. <laughs>
Mark. You okay?
Hey, hey, hey. You okay? Huh? I think so. You all right? How'd you get in here? Any more people with you? Huh? No, nobody. They're all out there trying to fix the door. I figured it'd be the quicker this way. All right. All right. Let's go out the way Steve came in. Let's go. Stay in line. Lead on. Let's go. Watch it. Hey, how long is it going to take to get the power connected up? I don't know. It depends on how much hardware I have to replace. for another year. Let's go get the rest of them. 